much. And uh, so I would like to invite our next speaker, uh, who is uh, uh, Josef Malitz, to present his talk about the role of RI1 channel in pancreatic, uh, pancreatic ductal physiology and pathology. Please. So thank you very much for the introduction and also thank you very much for the kind invitation. Yeah, actually, it feels great to be here. 10 years already passed, it's quite amazing. And uh, if I take a look back on my career, this 10 year really uh, was a great journey, I would say, and a long journey. So in this talk, I would like to talk, um, talk about uh, the role of Oraivan in the pancreatic ductal cells. And I'm really happy that uh, I had the chance to talk after Ole Petersen because he had such great uh, results in, in all other cell types in the pancreas, the pancreatic acinar cells, the salate cells, and also the immune cells. And I'm happy to add you the last piece of puzzle, which is the ductal cells. And I would like to introduce you how the ductal cells are actually affected by, uh, by the ori one channel. So as you all know, um, epithelial cells secrete um, ions and fluid, which maintains um, the pH uh, in the tissue lumen. And under pathophysiological conditions, uh, this fluid and ion secretion fails, which lead to several diseases. And obviously we focus here on the diseases of the pancreas. So acute pancreatitis is, um, as uh, Zoltan already introduced, caused mainly by um, biliary stones and alcohol. And it has a really high mortality, which are just to, to figure out how to treat this uh, disease. So, um, uh, I, uh, I started to study the pancreatic ductal epithelial cells early on um, as a young PhD student. And um, obviously I have a time machine, so I switched it on. And I found this lecture in Boston in 2002, actually where a young uh, enthusiastic postdoctoral fellow, Peter Hedge, tried to convince everybody that the pancreatic ductal cells mm -hmm. are actually important in the pancreas. And I think he was among the five people in the world who believed that. Uh, by that time. Um, after that, uh, 10 years passed and the Peter had an established and successful uh, PI was talking in the American Pancreatic uh, Association meeting about the role of pancreatic ductal cells in the pathophysiology of the pancreas. And um, Zoltan already uh, very nicely summarized um, the key findings of this, of this 10 years, which Peter uh, spent uh, on research uh, in uh, researching the pancreatic ductal pathophysiology. <clears throat> and I would like to emphasize only one thing um, because of everything else was mentioned, that in all cases, um, the sustained elevation of intracellular calcium seems to be crucial uh, to inhibit uh, the pancreatic ductal secretion, which has a great influence on the outcome of the acute pancreatitis. And this uh, feature is also shared as we learned from Ole Patterson's great work uh, with, with us in our cells where very similar uh, pathophysiological changes happen within the cell. So we uh, started to focus on, uh, on the ORI1 uh, calcium channel, um, obviously because Ole Patterson's group, Julia and, uh, uh, and Oleg uh, showed very elega elegantly that when you inhibit the ORI1 channel in pancreatic us in our cells, you are able to to stop the sustained elevation of intracellular calcium and also prevent the necrosis of, uh, of the pancreatic acinar cells. So this suggests that you can somehow uh, break this um, vicious cycle, break this, uh, uh, this, this pathophysiological curve, and you can <clears throat> maintain the cell function. And in a follow-up study, uh, David Credo uh, and Robert Shotton and the Liverpool group also showed that when you administrate this ORI1 inhibitor to uh, mice with acute pancreatitis in several models, you can actually decrease the disease severity. But uh, we have no idea how this affected the ductal cells. We have no idea what ORI1 is actually doing in the pancreatic ductal cells. So we started to focus on this. And uh, first we investigated the expression of ORI uh, one channels and store operated calcium entry proteins in the pancreatic ductal cells, also from mice and from humans. We grow human organoids uh, for that reason, and we did a whole transcriptome sequencing. And as you can appreciate, um, ORI1 channel is expressed in uh, also in mice and also in humans. 
And with demon stainings, we localize the Oriamon channel on the apical membrane of the pancreatic ductal epithelial cells. Um, the first su surprise came when, um, when we administrated the specific Oriamon inhibitor to unstimulated resting pancreatic ductal epithelial cells, and we saw a drop in the intracellular calcium, uh, which actually suggested us that this Oriamon channel somehow without any stimulation uh, could be active in this cell type. Uh, when we knock down uh, or I1 or STEM1 components of the store operated calcium anti uh, inductor cells, uh, this, um, this spontaneous calcium influx disappeared, and also the basal calcium of these cells decreased, suggesting that ORI somehow maintains um, at least partially the basal calcium in pancreatic ductus epithelial cells, which is a clear difference from us in our cells where this can not uh, be observed. So uh, we uh, tried to figure out what actually this, um, this Oriamon mediated calcium, uh, calcium influx uh, does in the uh, pancreatic ductal cells. And we did um, co-localization studies with the CFTR, which is um, one crucial uh, channel in the pancreatic ductal secretion. And we found the perfect co-localization of Oriamon and CFTR in the apical membrane of the ductal epithelial cells. And with super resolution microscopy, we were able also in overexpressed proteins, but also native proteins, we, we were able to show that these channels actually are not just co-localizing on a confocal microscope uh, picture, but they have actually a perfect co-localization suggesting that these proteins sit uh, within nanodomains in the apical membrane. When we inhibited the RI1 channel, uh, the CFTR chloride uh, CFTR mediated chloride secretion of these cells uh, was dramatically uh, decreased, uh, suggesting that the Oriva mediated calcium influx is really important to maintain CFTR function uh, in ductal epithelial cells. Um, we were curious whether this, um, this phenomenon is only true for mouse pancreas. So we generated organoids from uh, mouse airway, mouse uh, liver tissue, and also from human pancreatic. Uh, uh, human pancreatic tissue. And uh, we not just found the same organization of proteins on the apical membrane, but we also uh, found the same functional activity of Oriamon. So this constitutive activity of Oriamon was present in all epithelial cell types. And the inhibition of Oriamon uh, decreased CFTR activity in each cases. So next we, <clears throat> we wanted to figure out how, how the Oriamon uh, mediated calcium anti actually uh, uh, regulates uh, CFTR activity. So we focused on adenyl cyclases, calcium activated or calcium dependent adenyl cyclases. Uh, and we did again a co localization study with, uh, with the super resolution microscopy uh, showing that actually adenyl cyclase 1, 3, and 8, uh, 8 show. Uh, a uh, great per uh, high percentage of co-localization uh, with CFTR. And when we knock down these adenyl cyclases, obviously CFTR activity decreases. And uh, we were also able to show the same co-localization with ORI1, uh, with adenyl cyclase 1, 3, 8, and also with uh, three-color storm tech, which is quite challenging, we were able to localize these proteins within the same nanodomain of the cells. So, um, so to summarize this part of the, this is the physiological uh, part, uh, we found the constitutive calcium influx in pancreatic ductal cells without any stimulation, uh, which actually uh, creates a high calcium nanodomain around the CFTR, which by, uh, by the activity of calcium activated adenyl cyclases is turned into high cyclic AMP nanodomain, uh, which regulates uh, CFTR activity. We also did uh, studies to figure out actually what is the mechanism, why is Oriamon constitutively active, and I have no time to go into details, but we identified the, the secretory pathway calcium pump 2, uh, which maintains this uh, constitutive activity of Oriamon. So the next step was obviously uh, see what the, what the inhibition of Oriamon does uh, under pathophysiological conditions, and um, uh, we challenged the pancreatic ductal cells with uh, bile acids and also with the combination of fetal and fatty acids. And in both cases, um, the administration of ORI1, uh, selective ORI1 inhibitor 
which is developed by Calcium Medica, uh, was able to decrease, um, decrease the sustained calcium elevation triggered by, uh, by these toxins. Um, next, we, uh, we tested whether uh, this inhibition of cal sustained calcium influx affects uh, the damage ductal function, and we were able to, uh, to demonstrate a um, uh, preventive effect of oral one inhibition, but obviously uh, from the first part of my talk, it is quite clear that we can never reach the same level as, as in the uh, physiological conditions, but, but uh, at least this is some improvement which we can achieve. And uh, the fact that we can achieve this improvement uh, was sufficient uh, to also show this in in vivo animals that uh, this uh, in vivo pancreatic uh, fluid secretion is uh, greatly improved by the oral uh, inhibition. Obviously, we, uh, we repeated the acute pancreatitis studies by the Liverpool group and by, um, uh, by Stephen Pondo's group, and we, uh, we found the same that the uh, oral inhibition uh, was able to improve the disease outcome. Uh, so to summarize the acute uh, pancreatitis uh, uh, part, um, we showed that uh, uh, calcium entry to uh, ORI1 uh, damages the pancreatic ductal function by inducing mitochondrial damage and uh, the decrease of, uh, of the, of the uh, ductal ion and fluid secretion. And on the other hand, when we, when we are able to inhibit uh, the uh, the ORI1 channel with specific inhibitors, we are we can interrupt this uh, uh, this cycle, maintain mitochondrial function, and also improve the pancreatic ductal uh, pancreatic ductal secretion uh, in in vitro and in vivo models as well. So this actually suggests that not just uh, not just I mean uh, the the last uh, uh, last cell type in the pancreas uh, in, the, in the exocrine pancreas, the pancreatic ductal uh, epithelial cell function can be also maintained and preserved uh, with, uh, uh, with the ORI1 channel inhibition, suggesting that this could really be the uh, first therapy uh, which can uh, reach some success in, in clinical patients, actually. And um, in the last couple of minutes, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, our results in chronic pancreatitis, and I really uh, put just some small uh, hints of, uh, of our actual results because I was thinking that this lecture will uh, keep much longer than this. Uh, so I, um, I introduced only the part uh, uh, of uh, about our results about CFTR. So basically, uh, you, uh, we uh, previously described, we and others as well, that in chronic pancreatitis, the CFTR expression and the pancreatic ductal epithelial cells is actually decreased due to internalization and the uh, decreased expression of the CFTR chloride channel. So we were cu curious what happens when we, uh, when we administrate, the, when we trigger chronic pancreatitis in mice and we administrate uh, the ORI1 inhibitor uh, during, the acute during the chronic pancreatitis. And uh, we were surprised to see that um, actually the CFTR expression on the apical membrane uh, of pancreatic ductal epithelial cells is restored uh, when we administrate uh, the ORI1 channel inhibitor during the course of chronic pancreatitis, suggesting that you can improve uh, the function of the pancreatic ductal epithelial cells with this uh, treatment. And indeed, in in, uh, in vitro experiments, we also showed uh, that uh, administration of ORI1 inhibitor actually improves the CFTR function um, in chronic pancreatitis animals, which, which suggests that we would be able to restore uh, ductal function in chronic pancreatitis. Uh, so to summarize this part, um, we can see uh, decreased expression of CFTR on the apical membrane of the inductal cells during chronic pancreatitis. Uh, but again, uh, with the, with the ORI1 um, inhibition, we could be able to restore the uh, CFTR mediated uh, secretion of the ductal cells suggesting that this could be also interesting in, <clears throat> in chronic pancreatitis. So uh, to summarize um, the results of these studies, uh, first, we, uh, we observed that constitutive oriva mediated calcium influx maintains CFTR activity under physiological conditions uh, where high calcium nanodomains are translated actually to high cyclic AMP nanodomains. Uh, 
but under pathophysiological conditions, Oriva really acts like Harvey Dent uh, in Batman, and uh, sustain under these conditions, Oriva mediated sustained cal extracellular calcium influx uh, contributes to ductal cell damage uh, during acute pancreatitis, but it also seems to be important in chronic pancreatitis as well. So I would like to thank uh, the contribution of all group members and all collaborators. I would like to uh, highlight Peter, of course, who was um, mentor in my early, uh, during my early steps in pancreatic research, and also Zoltan, uh, and all the other collaborators and current members of my group. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you much. Great talk. And we have time for a few questions. Just a, a very nice talk, actually, and it is interesting to see that there is a kind of parallelism <clears throat> in a certain respect between the duct cells and the acinal cells. In both cases, you need some calcium influx for the normal function, but too much of it uh, <laughs> turns it into a different situation. I was just wondering about a small detail on the pharmacology. So you used uh, uh, CM5480. Uh, rather than uh, CM4620. Uh, yeah. Was there any particular reason for that? Did you compare them? Is the 5480 more effective on the duct cells than the other one? Could you just comment on that? Yes, yeah, so uh, we, we received this uh, pharmacological compound from Carci Medica, uh, with whom we have a collaboration. And this is actually the, the compound they will develop in the future due to better pharmacological uh, properties of this molecule. So it seems to be more stable in vivo. Uh, that's why they, they wanted to test this instead of the previously tested one. So did you compare the two uh, compounds, the 46 no. 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 So you only use the 54 We only use this one. We have other compounds uh, which, we which we currently test, but not the previous okay. one. Okay, thank you. Wonderful talk, Joseph. Um, so I've got, say, put it um, a naive question of a, by a clinician. So you said you restored um, or inhibiting ORI inhibits secretion. When we come from the conundrum of acute, treating acute pancreatitis, whether we should actually feed a patient or not feed a patient, we always heavily discussed whether restoring secretion was a therapeutic goal or um, it would be dangerous to the patient. And I think we all agreed on that um, feeding our patient is important, and this is because we restore secretion. So now you're showing us that a compound inhibiting secretion, at least in ductal cells, um, ameliorates pancreatitis. So that's kind of a yeah. um, paradox to me. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is actually a really great question. Uh, so when I say inhibiting uh, secretion, I I really mean that it inhibits CFTR activity to a certain level. So it seems to uh, be needed for normal CFTR function, but under pathophysiological condition, the pancreas and the pancreatic ductal cells uh, really seems to have a huge kick from, uh, from, from toxins and from others, which completely inhibits the secretion. So when you stop uh, the oriva mediated calcium influx, you, you are able to at least reach a certain level of secretion, which is not probably not mediated by CFTR, but could be mediated by other proteins and other secretory proteins, which you maintain. So, so on one side, you lose the CFTR activity, or at least partially the CFTR activity, which is, so actually my results, and I was not going into details, uh, but the stimulated CFTR activi activity is maintained. So the stimulated activity doesn't really need or I want mediated calcium influx, but this basal, um, secretory activity without uh, secretin stimulation seems to, for that, or I want mediated calcium influx seems to be important. So you use this, but you can gain a lot more on the other side. Quick question. You, uh, the last experiment with the chronic pancreatitis, don't you think that the effect of the inhibitor is actually through inflammatory cells and not a direct effect on, on the duct cell? Yeah. So again, due to the lack of time, I was not putting all the details. We tested all, uh, all different kind of cells in the pancreas. Um, and obviously the immune cells are also affected. Uh, so I, I, I put this 
uh, only results to hear about the ductal cells because I've, I found personally interesting that you can actually improve the, uh, the CFTR expression in the ductal cells. Obviously, the acinar cell function is restored and the uh, uh, stellate cell uh, function, so the fibrosis is decreased when you administer it or I1 channel inhibitor, and also the activity of immune cells are decreased. So it, again, what, uh, what Ole uh, emphasized uh, uh, during the discussion that you can hit all different cell types with one uh, molecule, it also seems to be true for the chronic pancreatitis, which is, I think, very important. Thank you, Joseph. Great talk. Um, I would like to ask you about, uh, you suggested that uh, this may serve as a therapeutic uh, compound as well. So as I imagine, uh, pathological calcium signaling is uh, a very initial event. Uh, and so what's sort of the point of no return? How much time uh, does it take uh, for it to be uh, reversible rather than irreversible? Have you tested that? Yeah, that's, that's actually something you cannot really uh, uh, answer with uh, with different in vitro and in vivo disease models. This is, I think, uh, obviously uh, one reason why clinical studies are very important to figure out when actually and how long uh, and what dose you have to treat. Um, again, I, I, I have to repeat all as uh, words, clinical trials are in progress with this compound, so we will see. So fantastic talk. Uh, uh, of course, I couldn't follow all the moments uh, of your presentation, but one of my biggest surprise was actually, which after landed in a gastro paper about the trips in experiments, but that uh, I strongly believe my hypothesis was that when we give trips in, this will cause acidosis inside the cell due to bicarbonate stimulation. And it was directly the opposite. When we gave trips into the cells, the cells became alkaline, and I ordered huge amount of different trypsins worldwide, mm -hmm. but it didn't work because it didn't work because it turned out later and after it was published as well that the trypsin inhibiting this CFTR channel, which caused a really big intracellular alkalization. So my question is about this calcium nanodomains, mm -hmm. how they react to pH changes. Because if you would like to have any kind of effect on it, you need to work a little bit in an alkaline condition. So have you tested about the effect of pH on the work of this calcium microdomains? Yeah, this is a great question, especially that a paper was published recently in Journal of Physiology uh, showing that Y1 channels are actually uh, pH sensitive. Uh, so there are a lot of open questions. This is one of them, and I think this is a great suggestion. Uh, well, maybe the very, very, very last one. I save some time for you. I'm, I'm <laughs> so it's just really a comment, uh, Julia Mayer's uh, uh, question before. I mean, the fact is that, uh, and it seems a bit mysterious, but the calcium relationship is very uh, complicated. So if you create a few small transient calcium signals, you markedly stimulate ATP synthesis. However, if you create big sustained calcium signals, uh, the ATP production uh, drops completely. And that's why actually there is no contradiction actually in the, in, in, in the results. It, it fits perfectly well. But the point is that you must have a kind of physiological level of stimulation and not the excessive one that you see in, in acute pancreatitis. And that's why blocking a little bit the calcium entry actually paradoxically helps uh, in order to sustain the ATP formation. It's an amazing thing, but if you look at ATP production, the high resolution, you can see you get a kick up in ATP every time there's a short lasting calcium spike. But as soon as you get a sustained calcium, you get only one spike of ATP and that's it. And then there's no more uh, metabolism. And now we know that in the absence of ATP, everything begins to deteriorate. expression levels. So for example, you mentioned the cardiologist knowing their physiology, reason being because the calcium signaling in the heart is so important in every minute that if we target it because we want to target pancreatitis, 
my biggest fear are side effects on, for example, the heart and arrhythmias. So, and this is basically when it comes to safety of the um, ORI um, channel blockers, I kind of fear then that in the situation of volume depletion, which obviously happens in pancreatitis that we could, could really cause harm. So uh, these are very different calcium channels from the ones that are predominant in the, which is the Valsigati calcium channel. So actually the RI1 channel inhibition is quite uh, specific. Actually in our 2013 paper in PNAS, we looked also at the heart and actually there was no change. This is of course animal experiments all and obviously it has to be tested again. But there's no particular reason to believe that there should be effects on, on, on the heart. And of course, in the actual animal studies, there were no problems uh, of, of, of this. Yeah. Time is always too short. Um, but you see that you, <laughs> that's a very, very last thing that when you actually, when you block ORI1, you don't only target, I mean, in vivo, you don't only target the decinal cell, but all the other cells. It, which could be good uh, if, uh, if we accept what, what Ola said about this, that there are many other interplayers actually, but there might be some actually bad side effects on the humans too. So maybe in humans actually that could uh, come up in a different way, but you, you have one final sentence and then we have to go. <laughs> No, I, I just wanted to uh, to react on Julia's comments first. That um, so really the uh, the the localization of these signals is what matters. So that's why we actually suffer so much on su with super resolution microscopy to show that these no domains are actually real nano domains. And I not call it because it's fancy, but I call it because it's a couple of nanometers on the optical cell. So you have a small, really small uh, uh, localized calcium signals which somehow. Uh, triggers this, so this is one thing. Uh, and the other thing uh, about the, the side effects, obviously this has to be tested very carefully. So immune cells are also affected. We don't want to switch them completely off. So there are a lot of um, certain things which, uh, which we have to careful about. Um, I really think that the dosage, the localized dosage and the duration of the treatment will matter a lot. We will see.